So this video is going to be a little controversial. Um, surprisingly, the videos that actually perform best on my channel are the ones of this nature. So I figure, why not? Let's have some more of these kind of tough discussions that get people all excited and make people want to talk about stuff. But if you are new to my channel and you don't know much about me, I do request that you either do some homework or respond respectfully rather than launching into a whole thing before you know anything about me or what I do here on my channel. So that's the disclaimer. I hope we can all play nice in the comment section. So I wanted to be really honest with you guys. Many of you have been following me for years. I've been doing regular videos on the channel for two years now with um, regular updates almost every single week. Um, so there's a lot of content on my channel. A lot of it is early music specific, Baroque instruments, but there are a lot of topics about career stuff and being a musician and forming your music career and so on. So we all know that you have to practice an instrument a ton to get good at it. But um, what we don't talk about very often is once we've done all that practicing, once we've achieved all those things we're trying to achieve, whether it's getting into music school, winning an audition, uh, winning another audition for another school, winning a job, getting a job, whatever it is that we practice so hard for. What doesn't get talked about very much is how much practicing actually happens once you are in the professional sphere. I am going to confess right now that I have not been practicing nearly enough for the last year. And this is something that a lot of people would not want to admit, that they have not really been practicing. And I, of course, have all my excuses and all my reasons and all my things I'm going to go into about that. Um, but I wanted to bring up this topic because I think it's very taboo and we all have this idea that we should be practicing hours a day from the time we start getting serious about an instrument or even when we're not serious about an instrument until the day we die. That intense practice is really what it's all about. And I'm not so sure that's true and I'm definitely sure that that's not realistic. So I just wanted to talk about this a little more openly. So a background on me, if you don't already know, um, I was very much behind in the classical music world. I was doing my college auditions about a month after my 17th birthday when I had only been taking lessons um, when I was about 15. So in order to be able to be taking auditions as a music performance major at some of the top conservatories on the East Coast, I had to practice like crazy. And I did not have, um, I had a wonderful teacher, but he was very, um, supportive. He wasn't super hard on me and nor were my parents. So I was really self-directed. I imposed a lot of intense practice time on myself uh, when I was in high school because I was so serious about getting into music school. Once I was in music school, it was clear that I was behind everybody. So I was practicing like crazy in the practice rooms, trying to make up for lost time. Um, I didn't have a lot of great experience with my private teacher and ended up switching teachers almost every year of my undergrad, practicing like crazy, trying to make up for lost time, trying to get into grad school. I got into my grad school of choice and then still in grad school because undergrad was so rocky, I fell behind. So practice, practice, practice. I practiced like crazy. Um, I completed my master's at 23 years old and was thrown out into the professional world. Um, luckily, I did a lot of private teaching. I think um, my late start actually helped me be a good teacher because I learned a lot of things about technique when I was a bit older. So I was really good at kind of explaining them from a more adult perspective since I learned them when I was a bit older. But I, of course, needed something else to do after I finished school, so I decided to record and perform an entire solo album, my first album, Bass Sounds, which came out in early 2013. So anyone who, you know, knows what it's like to prepare a solo program knows that you work so hard. You know, I had an undergrad recital, a master's recital, and then I created an unaccompanied recital out of my Bass Sounds program. So once again, even though I was done with school, practicing like crazy, preparing my recital program, uh, doing a performance and then also recording the entire album myself. After that, I didn't know what to do next, so after about another year or so, recorded yet another solo album, Bass Sounds Evolved. Same thing, I did three uh, release concerts for it, practicing like crazy, you get the idea. When we have these big things on the table, whether it is uh, academically imposed, like recitals or juries or something like that, or self-imposed, like doing solo concerts and solo recitals, these big projects force us to practice, they force us to create a routine and have stuff to work towards. Now, after Bass Sounds Evolved, I had two albums out that I put out myself since completing my master's. I think I was about 25. Um, I felt like I had done a lot. I started focusing on YouTube um, and recording things that I could just easily record at home, sort of short term. And the practice demands were not nearly as high for me as I started to do my YouTube videos because it was just one movement, just one piece, usually repertoire I was already familiar with. 
I got so busy uh, with my string quartet, emergence quartet, rehearsing with them, um, going through all of that, and solo practicing really started to fall by the wayside. Many of you know that in the last year I relocated from Boston to Los Angeles, which was a huge project where I had to let go all my students in Boston and start rebuilding my entire life in Los Angeles, which has been a huge process but super rewarding as well. But with all these life changes, all these things going on, trying to rebuild my career from the ground up, solo practicing time for the sake of it really just started to decline. And to be totally honest, without a concrete goal in front of me, it was hard to find the time to practice. And I think many musicians, maybe shortly out of school, can relate to this. What do you practice when you don't have private lessons? What do you practice when you don't have a teacher giving you repertoire? You don't have a specific thing you're preparing for? Uh, what does your practice time become? What repertoire do you work on? For me, I was always exploring unaccompanied repertoire because I wanted to do things that I didn't have to rely on other musicians and other people for. But I did two full albums of unaccompanied Baroque cello music and even the repertoire was starting to decline that I could really work on. So I gave myself about this last year to just chill out on practicing. I felt like I had practiced so hard for so many hours a day for such a huge chunk of my life. And I had accomplished so much with all that practice time, really completely reforming my technique. But I should give the disclaimer that a lot of my YouTube videos in the last year were done with very little practice and preparation. And while I would love everything that I share to be super polished and super prepared, for someone juggling such a complex freelance career, it's not always realistic that I have the hours to set aside for practice time for one video, especially something that I can play at about 85% without any practice time. These are the kind of things that many musicians do not want to admit to. We don't want to tell this to our students. We don't want to talk about the fact that when you start playing for money and everything you're doing is work related, the actual individual practice time declines quite a bit from when you're in that academic mode, always practicing for a lesson because your teacher is expecting something or because you have a jury. Um, it's very different when you don't have those same kind of self-imposed deadlines and you're really just playing for work. So my confession is this, I haven't really practiced much in the last year. I haven't had a practice routine. I've had to, you know, maybe spend an afternoon or a day a couple times for certain gigs, other things like that. But the regular daily practice of sitting down, playing the scales, warming up, I just have not been doing. Um, and I'm not going to say I'm proud of that, but I understand that it was sort of a, a thing that needed to happen for me in the last year with so much transition. I think especially if you're in one of those places, like maybe you're in between years in a master's program or you're in a doctoral program and you have some time off, I think taking time off practice is actually really important and vital because many music students I'm sure know the experience of burnout when you practice so hard and so much that every single second of your practice starts to feel just disheartening and discouraging and you just don't know what to do with yourself. So time away is super important and I think it really does make practicing so much more enriching and positive when you return to it. That being said, about a year is definitely too long, so I am ready to get back into practicing. Um, I do have some upcoming projects, nothing that I'm quite ready to announce yet, but I do want to start getting into a practice routine again, even though it's so hard to do when you don't have that really, really specific tangible goal. But this is my announcement to all of you guys that I'm going to be doing more practice live streams to help hold myself accountable for my actual practice. Um, some of you know that I do live streams in my practice sessions, which usually end up being me kind of talking to you guys in the chat and sort of just playing through pieces start to finish. But what I want to do is have some longer practice sessions where I'm really warming up, I'm really spending the time practicing exactly how I would be, and then kind of jumping in with the chat to interact with you guys when I can. So that is my confession. I have not been practicing. If you think my videos have not been up to par in the last year, that is why. But I want to change that. I want to get back into my groove of good practicing and technique. I've done it so many times before for all the programs that I've prepared, so I know what to do. It's just about getting myself to do it. So I'm curious to hear from you guys now how you approach your practice, whether you are in school, uh, in an advanced degree program, or just out of school and freelancing. I want to hear all about you guys and how you practice and what your practice methods are. Thanks so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. And if you'd like to help support me in the production of these videos, you can become my patron on Patreon.